Thank you so much for that warm introduction and thank you for having us here today and thank you for everyone for joining us for our presentation. As Natalia said, my name is Amaya Webster and I'm the Terrasso Program Manager at Tech Matters. We will jump into our presentation shortly, but first I wanted to go over one housekeeping thing, which is that we'll leave time for Q&A at the end of our talk, but we wanted to encourage people to feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go along and then We'll do our best to answer them in real time and the ones that we don't get to we can return to at, at the end um, and that was all the housekeeping i had so i'll i'll jump in i think it's safe to say that climate change and unsustainable development are huge problems that many if not all landscapes are facing and in order for landscapes and communities to survive I think we can all agree that things really need to change and achieving landscape wide change is accelerated by effective technological support. This is why my colleague Derek and I are here to talk to you today. As I mentioned, we work on Terrasa, which is a digital platform that is being built by Tech Matters as part of the 1000 L or sorry, 1000 landscapes for 1 billion people initiative, which we always call 1000 L. The 1000 Landscapes for 1 Billion People is an initiative aimed at aligning efforts to meet global targets for addressing food and water insecurity, biodiversity loss, land degradation, and climate change. The initiative's goal is to help local communities, or as we like to say, 1000 Landscapes and 1 Billion People, around the world better plan and finance sustainable economies. We collectively believe that national and international efforts are not enough we really need to deliver the tools, the knowledge, and the funding to regional projects that are led by the people who really live there. The core coalition consists of seven organizations, including six conservation organizations. Um, those are Eco, Eco Agriculture Partners, Common Land, Finance Lab, Rainforest Alliance, the UNDP, and Conservation International. Tech Matters is the technology partner of this coalition, meaning that we help to develop technological tools and infrastructure that are needed to actually help the initiative's goals. Well, local decisions are critical in terms of sustainability, especially in the areas of access to water, food, energy, economic empowerment, etc. Yet local leaders often lack the tools that would help them fully understand their landscape. One of the fundamental components of 1000L is this idea of integrated landscape management. By joining together through long-term landscape partnerships, local people and communities can connect with and influence governments, policy, social movements, markets, and finance, and contribute to the systematic solutions for achieving both local and global goals. Terrasso aims to provide landscape actors with the technology tools needed to support their work through the creation of a digital toolbox that enables effective landscape management. Derek will go more into detail on what that means and looks like, but first I wanted to talk about one of the things that sets Terrasso and our work with 1000L apart, which is our dedication to putting the users, the landscape leaders and actors first, and involving them as co-design partners in every step of the platform creation process. Uh, we have spent the last year, year plus, meeting with different landscapes and conservation organizations around the world. And the GIF on the screen highlights where our current landscape partners are located. So we're working with groups in Mexico, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Guyana, South Africa, Kenya, Spain, Romania, Nepal, Indonesia, and Fiji. Um, so really, really around the world. Um, and we met and continue to meet with them repeatedly to learn what challenges they face in their sustainability and conservation efforts, what technology they're using that works for them, and then most importantly, what technology they use that doesn't work for them and, and why, why it doesn't work. Um, through all these conversations, we've been able to identify the main problems with technology that are in really impacting landscapes. You know, and these are the issues that, um, you know, tools aren't designed with landscape leaders in mind. Many tools are not built to fit landscape context. Technologies are opaque, complex. They require specialized knowledge to use. Many tools require human and fiscal resources that landscape leaders just don't have. And then landscape leaders and landscapes lack a way to really discover um, what effective tools and processes exist. 
Some other things that came up during our conversations were non-technical issues, but definitely emerging themes, and they covered about five key problem areas. And those areas were community and input engagement, project management and collaboration, storytelling, like how to share what you're doing, what your needs are, what impact you have, what the problems are with the broader world and community. Um, issues around data collection and data sharing, and then mapping and land use planning. So we took what we learned about the technical problems and the thematic challenges, and we're now working with our co-design partners to identify and test potential technological tools and solutions from our many aligned software tool providers to help deal with these problems. We're currently doing a lot of testing with different data collection tools, uh, mapping tools, and looking into better storytelling solutions. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Derek Kalin, so he can do a deeper dive into our work, um, what we have planned, and how we're supporting locally-led landscape collaborations to really drive landscape-wide change and sustainability. Okay, uh, thank you, Amea. I'm Derek Kalin. I'm the product manager for Terrasso. So we, we listed a bunch of different uh, categories of technology. Uh, just now, where people said, hey, you know, we really need support. We lack tools made for our particular environment, our particular context, our skill set, our languages. And those tools include, you know, mapping technologies, data collection, networking, learning. Um, the thing that kind of excites us in the Terrasso team is the fact that there are many open source initiatives that are starting to bridge these gaps. And we envision Terrasso as being a, a way to put them all in one place and, and interconnect them so that if somebody ends up collecting data uh, in one tool, they can easily turn around and visualize it or share it with their community or turning it into some sort of storytelling asset. Um, so that's part of the value add that we, we think Terrasso is going to deliver. I wanted to tell two stories about how we are engaging with landscapes to give you a sense of what it's like to interact with Terrasso and, and the impact that we hope to have. Uh, first, we're gonna stop off in a landscape um, uh, in Mexico. Uh, the polygon that you're seeing on the screen here is in the Guanajuato region in Mexico. Uh, and our main co-design partner there is a group called Reforestamos Mexico. Um, they're a nonprofit with the goal of addressing rapid deforestation that's going on in the area um, due to both, um, well, uh, a lot of deforestation that's happening due, due to environmental changes, but also the result of economic factors, you know, urban creep, agricultural uh, loss. And, um, you know, this group, Reforest Thomas Mexico, is doing their best to try to address this problem by first identifying <laughs> where the change is happening, uh, looking at satellite imagery and trying to to spot where deforestation has been occurring over the years. And then they launch a, a long process of engaging with the, the landowners and uh, working with them to do a reforestation process, pulling in the private sector to or maybe government actors to, to fund the reforestation initiative. The thing is, that first step of the process where they're looking at satellite maps and trying to identify um, automatically uh, where these changes are occurring was phenomenally challenging. And they told us that um, after, uh, you know, trying to set up their computers to, to look at this massive landscape, um, their computers would sort of look like, oops, would look like this. Um, they would run analyses for the better part of a day, maybe a full 24 hours. Um, and because their laptops were slow uh, and some of them were quite old, you know, they would creep and crawl and try to do this analysis. And then at the end, they might just fail. Um, and it ended up wasting a huge amount of time. Uh, and uh, as you know, time is, is money uh, in, in the nonprofit sector and everywhere, really. Um, so when they told us about this area, we went out and did some research. And we found a number of really powerful tools that kind of helped to facilitate this automatic analysis of, of landscapes. And we, we brought a whole bunch uh, to uh, the, the GIS experts on the team, the, the mapping experts on the team. But the one that really caught their eye was a open source tool produced by the Food and Agriculture Organization called CEPL. 
And I'm sharing my screen right now to, to show you what it looks like. Sepal is a cloud-based tool. So it runs in the cloud, uh, not on a, 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 a desktop computer. And it leverages um, a bunch of technologies that are out there available for, for free. In some cases, in some cases, <laughs> Uh, the SQL providers are actually paying for it. But the, the end result is that a user can log on to a website and then click onto a map saying, okay, this area I think is a uh, forest area and this area is not forest area. And SQL will do the analysis in the cloud. Uh, and what you're seeing right here is the, the automatic map, uh, automatically generated map uh, compared to the uh, actual satellite map. Um, so the satellite imagery is up to date. You can get near daily, very high resolution satellite imagery this way. Uh, the analysis takes place over the course of several minutes as opposed to a, a several days. And when we showed this to the group, they were they were thrilled. Um, we've been working with Reforestamos Mexico to test a number of different uh, open source tools in this respect. Uh, not only Sepal, uh, which by the way, is also a mobile device, so it, it actually supports the devices that our, our partners in the, uh, the field use uh, when they're out and about. Uh, but we're also testing other tools like um, Kobo Toolbox, which is a really powerful data collection tool developed by the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative. It, you know, the, I think one of the big uh, value adds for, for this tool is that it works in offline environments. Uh, so you can go out into the field and uh, you know, take pictures of the trees that you've planted that ordinarily you wouldn't be able to capture with a, a, a digital device that doesn't have some sort of offline data collection ability. So we're really pleased by our partnership with Reforest Thomas Mexico. We've learned a whole bunch from these folks and we're hoping that as they have found these tools to be valuable, we can turn around and present these to other landscape leaders uh, and they get to benefit from this collaboration that we've had. Another group that we uh, have been working with is uh, uh, kind of in a, in a different vein. Uh, ANE is an indigenous-led cooperative, agricultural cooperative in the Sierra Mountains in Colombia. And uh, they're kind of a, a fantastic group of people. Uh, they really don't need to be told what regenerative and organic practices look like. They've been doing it for many, many thousands of years. Um, and our collaboration with them has also been around data, but with a different focus. So Ane uh, has, as an agricultural group, has been trying to collect data effectively um, for the purposes of, of uh, certification. Because as you may know, if you can get certified for these different practices saying, oh yes, these people are, are organic or they sequester a certain amount of carbon, um, they can charge a premium for their product, which is in this case, uh, mostly uh, coffee. Um, they have up till this point uh, had to work with paper-based data collection tools. Um, and those paper-based data collection tools, uh, and when I say data collection tools, I mean forms, um, you know, there's some reasons that they fit well to the environment. They uh, don't require technology. Um, they don't require power or internet connection. But as any researcher knows, uh, paper is kind of difficult to turn into a digital asset that can then be shared with other people or visualized or analyzed in a concrete way. And they've been experimenting with uh, digital collection tools, but none that really uh, that they own and that they are able to manipulate in the ways that they they want. Uh, so we've also been showing them uh, Kobo Toolbox uh, and they've been experimenting. Uh, they're in the process of testing it now, what it's like to, to use this tool in the field. The question of data is very interesting because Ane is aware that the information that they have about the quality of the soil, about rainfall, about uh, the health of organisms within their their territory and on a is you know about at this point uh, some 500 to 700 uh, farmers within a particular geography in the Sierra Mountains all of this information has value uh, and they they uh, we were kind of pleased to to bring this up to to this particular group of people because they were saying 
listen, we think one way that we might be able to build value for other people and to build value for us is to facilitate some sort of a collaboration between NA and researchers. How might we be able to, to take this data that we are collecting about a changing environment uh, and make this available to, to researchers so that you know both of us can can benefit from it. Uh, and it's one uh, it's a question that we are very interested in exploring with them. We think the first step is is effective data collection. I think the next step uh, is probably data sharing. So you know, it, Anne has talked to us about a bunch of different challenges that they they have. And I mentioned that their their data collection tools are are not the best at the moment. Uh, they are very interested in sharing data uh, and insight about the land and figuring out ways to collaborate with universities. So that's another example of how our interactions with landscapes have really presented us with some interesting technology challenges with some interesting, you know, collaboration challenges, challenges that frankly are not technology related there or <laughs> focused, I should say. They're, they're challenges that all landscapes are trying to deal with. And we just think that technology can be a component of the, the solution to better, more effective uh, collaboration. So uh, I've been talking a lot about data collection and mapping. I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight about where we expect to go, because ultimately we view Tarasso as a, a tool for, as a suite of technology, I should say, for many, many different um, uh, functions within this framework of integrated landscape management. Landscapes need to come together, <laughs> form a partnership, uh, come to a shared understanding of what's going on within a landscape, jointly plan on what needs to happen within that landscape, fund those plans, do them effectively through collaboration, and then learn from those experiences. And we see the various tools that we're rolling out whether it be data collection or mapping or storytelling or collaboration or peer-to-peer -peer learning, um, these things are all a fundamental part of that ILM process. And over the next uh, year, we have a pretty ambitious schedule for rolling out these free and open source tools that we envision landscape leaders around the world will have access to. Um, so it's it's quite an uh, exciting prospect and we're really pleased to be able to, to work on this challenge. So. Um, we, you know, the, the question is, uh, that we put out to the world, uh, whenever we do these sorts of presentations is like, we, we really want to collaborate with people. How might you or other people get involved? And at the end of the day, Tarasso is, you know, open source software. Um, and we try to leverage, you know, the resources that people have created wherever it is. Right. So, you know, ideally we'd like to integrate with open source software. We are happy to integrate with proprietary tools if that's what, you know, the, the situation demands and that's what uh, landscape leaders identify as their, their solution. But there are other like non-technological aspects that we also think are out there uh, that can, can enhance the goals of landscape leaders. So, you know, if you are involved with a landscape that wants to pursue ILM, you know, we would be thrilled to work with you around the design of the tool. We talk to you and talk to the landscape leader that you're talking about to say, okay, what is it that we should be focusing on? What tools are most valuable to me? Uh, and, you know, provide feedback on the tools that are coming off our, our, our pipeline. If you already work for an organization that's supporting an ILM approach, you know, we'd love your advice on the best ways to do ILM. Uh, we've got a, a coalition of partners that is always expanding uh, and really, you know, everybody's got a unique perspective and approach. We'd love to hear from you about what you think is the best thing. And if you have access to technology or you are yourself a developer, share your work with us. We'd love to learn more. Um, so by all means, uh, please do reach out. Um, you can go to our website, terrasso.org, uh, and both Amea and I are uh, accessible at the email addresses that you see below. Amea at techmatters.org, Derek at techmatters.org. We're really thrilled to, to speak with you folks and to connect further. And with that, I believe that is my last slide. So I will stop sharing and I look forward to having a conversation.